I love to plant trees here, oak, beech, elm, chestnut, and watch them grow and observe their annual rebirth every spring. I have made it into a wildlife sanctuary. Irish wildlife has a relatively small number of species, but they are of a fascinating variety. We have a small stud farm here also, where we produce thoroughbred racehorses. My daughter Emer looks after the stud these days. I'm afraid she does it a great deal better than when I tried to manage things. Well, this is Lady Helga. There's that. You know? That's the bridle you're looking for. Oh, yeah, thanks. Isn't she looking well? Looking great. She's just about to go back into training with Jim. Uh, I, I saw her, you know, the night after she was came back from Leopardstown. Yeah, that was the first We thing. often ride out together for about half an hour right, in the morning. Yeah, and of course you and your ma will sell her if you get the chance, <laughs> when I'm not looking. <laughs> well, we sold her brother, and he's won two races in England, so... Dublin has always been one of the great cities of Europe, great in its cultural traditions, in its architecture, above all, perhaps, in its people. Even when we didn't have a country, we had a capital, Dublin, a city which rejoiced in its importance and its identity. This market in Moore Street, these ladies with their stalls, are part of the very fabric of Dublin life. This is a place to come to relax and savour Dublin humour at its best, and maybe even buy something. Hey, you the market? I bought this morning at 7 o'clock. Who are you buying from Tom? Well, Tom, his brother, and uh, Concealy, of course. Concealy? <laughs> <laughs> Nowadays, it is full of young people, and I must say, I think that in spite of all its problems, it is still a great city to grow up in. A city is a place for people to live, not some kind of commuterized, commercialized, compartmentalized, all-embracing supermarket. Of course, like most cities, Dublin has had many problems in recent years. There has been a tendency to push outwards towards the suburban perimeter and leave the centre to look after itself. There has been an emphasis on office space to the detriment of other kinds of activity. And there have been unsuccessful experiments in high-rise accommodation for a people who are accustomed to a more intimate and a more human scale of things. To reverse all this, we launched a major program of providing facilities for modern industry in derelict areas, more inner city housing, and a safe and friendly environment for old people to live out their lives in familiar surroundings, and where young people can have fun and enjoy their youth. She holds my mind with her seedy elegance with her gentle veils of rain, and all her ghosts that walk, and all that hide behind her Georgian facades. A city is also its architecture, a matter which present-day democratic governments are inclined to neglect, perhaps because they think it will take care of itself. And it is tradition, history in grey brick upon brick, declamatory bronze on sombre pedestals. Dublin is still recognisably an 18th century as well as a modern city. The cathedrals which the Normans built are still familiar landmarks.
the ghost of the great satirist and dean of St. Patrick's Cathedral, Jonathan Swift, walks here. His successor, the present dean, Dean Victor Griffin and I, like to meet from time to time to talk about the current scene and the past also. Great concern for one another and great compassion and all. When anything would go wrong, you know, if you needed help, uh, you could turn to your neighbour and religion didn't matter. Of course, Swift said an extraordinary thing. He said, you know, the trouble about, about us in some place in Ireland where we've started to fight about religion, he says that in some cases the Irish have um, uh, enough uh, religion to make them hate one another, <laughs> but not enough to make them love one that's another. Very, very, and he said that, you know, that's very, that's, yeah. Uh, uh, so I there. Yeah. When, when religion becomes uh, uh, divisive and uh, a thing in itself and the object of worship in itself, when it becomes all important so that we put religion in the place of God, yeah. then that leads us to division and hatred. Or when you think of Swift and Congreve and people like Barclay, George Barclay, the great philosopher that we are celebrating his tercentenary this year, and Goldsmith, uh, so they they certainly contributed a great deal mm. to to Ireland, mm. and, and and I always right. think when I look at them that that um, the concept of Irishness has to be more um, inclusive. Perhaps at times we have narrowed it a bit too much. Do you know? Yeah. Oh Did, well, I, you know, I always feel, I always feel very strongly about yeah, that. Yeah. That the one perhaps outstanding characteristic of Ireland as a nation or as a people is our capacity to absorb. Yes, yeah. I think yeah, from, yeah. from prehistory, right, yeah. we have absorbed invasions mm. and gradually assimilated the mm. people mm. 